A model steamboat named Edith, part 3, performing a hydraulic test on the boiler. This is the original boiler that was in the boat, and here it is on the bench, with all of the cladding removed, and I also reprofiled the threads in the bushes in the last episode. In the workshop, I have a box full of blanking plugs, so it was a simple job to find blanking plugs to fit all these thread forms. I need to perform a hydraulic test on this boiler to make sure it's safe. If it fails the test, then it will be scrapped. If it doesn't fail the test, it will go back in the boat, where it will be used to provide the steam to run the engine. The silver soldering on this boiler is not the neatest that I've ever seen, but the good thing about the boiler is it has longitudinal stays, and these four solid stays run through the boiler from front to back. There are four of them, and their function is to reinforce the end plates and hold them together to resist the pressure. However, with a lot of old model steam boilers this is not the case, and some of them have brass end plates which is no good at all. This one's copper all the way, and it looks quite strong. And just how strong the boiler is, I will find out shortly. In this clip you will notice that I'm applying some Loctite 542 thread sealant to the threads of the blanking plugs. When performing a hydraulic test it's vital that none of these blanking plugs leak in the slightest because once the boiler is full of water and under pressure, what I will be looking for are leaks from anywhere on the boiler, and that includes the blanking plugs. For instance, I could easily confuse a leaking blanking plug with a leaking boiler bush. I wouldn't know the difference. So now it's time to fill the boiler, and I'm filling the boiler on a different part of the bench from where I'm doing the test. That's in case any water splashes onto the bench, at least I will know that it's not water that's come out of the boiler during the pressure test. At this point I would just like to say that it is absolutely vital, and I mean really seriously vital, that the water in the boiler goes all the way to the top, there must be no air in the boiler at all. The whole point of testing the boiler using hydraulics is the fact that water is not compressible. Air, of course, is compressible, and steam is very compressible too. So it would be really stupid to use air or steam to test a boiler for the first time. Just then, I removed the funnel to have a look in the hole and see how much water's in the boiler, and it's getting quite close to the top. I'm sure that some water is going to run out onto the boiler, but I have a cloth at hand to mop it up immediately. As I mentioned earlier, the most important thing is, as I start the hydraulic test, there must be no residual water anywhere on the boiler or around the boiler and you're about to see why I'm filling the boiler on a different part of the bench. I've exaggerated the amount of water coming out to show you in the video. Here I'm putting the last blanking plug in place, and now this boiler is completely full of water with no air in there at all. I hold the boiler level as I screw the blanking plug in, and you'll see a little bit more water comes out of the union, which means that it's water all the way. Over now to the other side of the bench, being very careful not to spill any water, I fill the tank, for the hydraulic pump. I cannot stress how important it is not to have any drops of water on the boiler or anywhere near the test area. In this clip I'm using a cloth to remove any water from the outside of the boiler. And here I've connected the pipe to the boiler. So now I just pump the handle and you'll see the pressure rise. The idea of this is to test the boiler to twice working pressure. And its working pressure is going to be 60 pounds per square inch, but I'm going to take it up as though it was 80 pounds per square inch to around 160 psi. By the way, I referred to the pump as a hydraulic pump. It is, of course, a tender hand pump, but it's still a hydraulic pump because it pumps water, and in no time at all, the pressure has reached 160 pounds per square inch. I'm now going to leave the boiler at this pressure for about 15 minutes. What I should really do is fit a valve on the boiler so I can cap off the pressure, because there is a slight leakage back through the ball valves on the pump. This is a good time to go and make a cup of tea. By the way, these are some mugs that my daughter Charlotte's had made, and on the back of them is a really good quote, which is very true. The quote says, Science owes more to the steam engine than the steam engine owes to science, which is very true. Even current modern electric locomotives use electricity that is generated by boiling water. After 15 minutes, I think it was a bit longer than that in this case because the phone rang, I have to remove the blanking plugs. There's no danger whatsoever in doing this, because even though there's a lot of pressure in the boiler, it's only water. So I very slowly undo the plug, and you can see the water starting to come out, and you can see the pressure dropping. Yes, I get a lot of water squirting at me and running onto the bench, but that's really not a problem, is it? If the boiler was full of compressed air, or even worse, steam, there is no way I would be doing this. So I'm pleased to say that this boiler is past fit for service, so it's time to fit the fittings. This is a clack valve, 
and this is the water gauge going in. Fitting water gauges has been covered in other videos, but once again I will go through it quickly so you know what I'm doing. First of all I put the bottom fitting in, followed by the top fitting. I remove the top nut to put the glass in place. And inside the two nuts that hold the glass in position, there are two steam grade silicone o-rings fitted, and this will stop the water gauge from leaking. Along with the fitting of boiler fittings, I always use Loctite 542, and I'm putting a very tiny amount on this top nut, because it's very annoying if after you get your boiler in steam, water starts pouring out of the top nut. And similarly, I've put some Loctite 542 on the steam tap. All I have to do now is tighten it in position, and there we go. The next fitting to go in is for the pressure gauge, and this thread is a quarter by 32. But luckily, I had a quarter by 32 double union adapter in my box of quarter by 32 double union adapters. And to this union will be connected the pressure gauge, but not directly. It's always important to use a siphon, which is just a piece of copper pipe, and that stops the steam from getting to the internal parts of the pressure gauge, which would damage some of the internal components. And that's just about it for now. In the next episode, I will give the boiler a steam test, but before I do that, I'll fit the pressure gauge and a brand new pop type safety valve. The one that I'm just removing was just fitted for effect, and it doesn't work properly anyway. I'm going to make some more tea, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.